I wasn't going to do this seam right here because it appeared to me that it was sealed really, really well just by the uh, glue. I thought that that uh, solvent glue had, you know, dissolved the plastic enough that it had sort of welded itself together here. But, you know, it probably wouldn't hurt. I'm going to be, you know, sanding it smooth anyway, so... Now on the very front here, there's a little round part, and I think it's probably supposed to represent uh, primitive sonar or something like that. I'm just going to wet my finger here. And... Well, this seems to have hardened up fairly nicely. We'll find out in a few minutes how it's going to sand. As for this thing here, I've taken this little tube out. Just pulled it out with a pair of pliers. So the, the hole here is now a little bit uh, larger. And also it's a lot shorter. So I'm thinking that, you know, it's going to be a lot easier to shove the uh, stuff through. Now this is this is a fairly tight fit. I don't know why it's going so so hard here. Anyway, uh, maybe I'm not going to be using this and the reason being is that it's very hard to clean out. It took me about 10 minutes to, when I was using it the day before yesterday. I'm going to try the wet finger idea again. It could well be that I'm leaving a way too much on here. Now I was just trying an experiment here. And I took some water on my finger and and this has been this is hard, but you know what? It it redissolves. Now I don't know if that's a good a good thing or not because you know that, that would mean that the water based you know like the acrylic paint it might also dissolve this stuff. Now I guess the main thing is if it, as long as it stays in the crack. But my my thinking was that if I could get some of this off. Well, then it'd be a lot less sanding to do here. Now, I think where I made my mistake was I did not remove all the excess with a wet finger. Yeah. Now, if it if it was an outside curve like like right here, like right there, that's not so important, but an inside curve, that's very hard to sand. I shouldn't have any trouble on the bow. Should have thought of that actually from, you know, sanding wood. Now I think I just saved myself a lot of work with the sandpaper.
I bought these sandpaper profilers, I guess that's what you'd call them, from Lee Valley about, oh man, it must be five or more years ago. And I think finally I'm going to be able to put some of them to good use here. Okay, like, uh, for instance, this one here, you put the sandpaper around it and it'll give you a radius like that. And, uh, or if you want to go into, uh, like say this one here, this is just about the right radius to go around this. So when you go back and forth, well, you get the idea. So I'll probably be using this one. Yeah. But you know what? I got to clean up here. This is getting horrendous. And you know, you're just seeing this one small area right here. You should see it out there. Well, I'm not going to show you. I realized that I'm going to be getting sawdust, or I guess plastic dust, into my cloth here. But I've got a solution for that. And uh, I got these spread out because I just wanted to show you that it comes in four different sizes. This one being the largest uh, for doing an inside curve down to this one. I've already concluded that this one here is probably going to fit best right in here. And uh, then for doing an outside curve, like around here, it's got, got these. This is the largest radius and this is the smallest radius. Anyway, um, oh, and then it's got, got this sort of thing, you know, with quite a sharp taper right down to what looks like almost 90 degrees. Anyway, oh, and a little flat one, which I might be using, who knows. But the idea is that you would take your uh, sandpaper, like I've just got this little piece right now, that you just take and you go around and, and you hold it with your fingers and, you know, that... You get the idea. Now this one here, it's not too bad. But this one here, I feel quite a little bump there. But we'll just see how this is going to work here. By the way, this is 400 grit. And I'll, I'll just use it to get the worst off and then I'll switch to 1000 grit. Let's just see what's going to happen here now. If I do it like this, it might be better. Just sort of angle it, and I don't want to be touching this because this is okay. Oh, yeah. Maybe I'll come in like this. I can hardly feel that. It might paint over really well. Well, anyway, you get the idea. Now, I have switched over to just using my fingers here. The reason being is I can actually feel the contour a little better. Could be in a different situation. I'll be doing something different, but... Well, this is going to be a lot better than it was anyway. I think that that putty will have you know, basically fill the crack. And I managed to not break these off. Okay, now for the bow. I'm wondering, should I maybe just rehydrate this piece right here and see if I can't take some of this off. Let's see what happens here. Okay, I remember that little round thing on the front. I don't want to be taking that down.
I think I better get a new piece of 1,000 grit here. Get rid of these scratches. Well, I do know that in the future, the next time I apply this putty, I'm going to remove as much as I can without removing it from the crack with a wet finger. I am going to see here if I can't maybe just rehydrate this, see what happens. I know it's been several hours since I put it on. Now I do not want to be removing it from the crack, that's for sure. This might be a mistake. Well, at least we know it can be rehydrated. Now this piece here is higher than this piece here. So I do not want to be removing, you know, scraping there. I want to keep, you know, I want to keep it as high as possible, if you know what I mean. Okay, maybe that's good enough. Okay, now I'll do the same on the other side. Well, I think I did leave some putty in the crack. I'll try and get this excess off here without actually touching the crack. Okay, now we'll just go over it after it dries with the 1000 grit. Well, once again, I think you get the idea. Well, it's sure a lot better than it was. Now I have a little bit more to do on the hull yet before I can do the primer thing. And I may have a little problem here. When I was in Cellar Dweller about, oh, almost two months ago now, I picked up some primer. And, uh... At that time, they didn't have the Model Master, which I believe is Tasters, but I'm not sure. They didn't have any uh, of the brand name uh, thinner. So I then went and I got some uh, Tamiya paints and some T Tamiya thinner. Unfortunately, I didn't get the Tamiya primer. Now I've got uh, the Vallejo uh, thinner. But that apparently may not be compatible with anything else except Vallejo. Now, I, maybe it is, maybe it isn't. So I was thinking that, you know, probably this, this thinner is compatible with this. But I want to go online and make sure that there uh, isn't going to be some sort of congealing going on, you know. Uh, yeah, you know how it can go. So, uh, yeah, i got to do something about this seam and get rid of these... Uh, places where the injection uh, molding, you know, there's a little nubs snipped off there and there's another one at the other end there. And yeah, and then I think we're just about ready to uh, prime this thing. Now, well, there is something interesting that I just noticed just a few minutes ago, and that is that there does not appear to be a line along here anywhere that indicates where the the uh, hull red on the bottom uh, stops and the uh, gray, you know, the battleship gray starts. Now the whole thing has to be primed anyway, or should be, I guess. Anybody out there uh, try painting without priming? How did, and uh, let me know, how did it go? Um, I'm kind of worried about 
places like right here that it's that if I put primer and paint on top of it, I'm going to lose detail, but maybe not. I, I don't think I've ever primed before. Mind you, I don't think I've ever gone to all the work before that I'm going to over this one. So, yeah. Anyway, uh, I guess that's it for today. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you tomorrow.